Mission San Javier del Pack. White Dove of the Desert. A National Historic Landmark, San Javier Mission was founded as a Catholic mission by Father Eusebio Kino in 1692. Construction of the current church began in 1783 and was completed in 1797. The oldest intact European structure in Arizona, the church's interior is filled with marvelous original statuary and mural paintings. It is a place where visitors can truly step back in time and enter an authentic 18th century space. The church retains its original purpose of ministering to the religious needs of its parishioners. The mission is nine miles south of downtown Tucson, Arizona. Some 200,000 visitors come each year from all over the world to view what is widely considered to be the finest example of Spanish colonial architecture in the United States. The current church dates from the late 1700s, when southern Arizona was part of New Spain. In 1783, Franciscan missionary Father Juan Bautista de Valderrain was able to begin construction on the present structure using money borrowed from a son on rancher. He hired an architect, Ignacio Gona, and a large workforce of Autumn, Indians to create the present church. Following Mexican independence in 1821, San Javier became part of Mexico. The last resident Franciscan of the 19th century departed in 1837. With the Gadsden Purchase of 1854, the mission joined the United States. In 1859 San Javier became part of the Diocese of Santa Fe. In 1866 Tucson became an incipient diocese and regular services were held at the mission once again. Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondel had opened a school at the mission in 1872. Franciscan Sisters of Christian Charity now teach at the school and reside in the convent. The Franciscans returned to the mission in 1913. Recently, Mission San Javier became a separate non-profit entity. It remains a testament to the endurance of culture throughout our history. Today the restoration continues when funds are available. The architecture. Constructed of low fire clay brick, stone and lime mortar, the entire structure is roofed with masonry vaults, making it unique among Spanish colonial buildings within U.S. borders. The architect, Ignacio Gona, is credited with building another church in Caborca, Sonora, Mexico. Little is known about the people who decorated the interior. The artwork was probably commissioned by Father Valderrain's successor and most likely created by artists from Carretero in New Spain, now Mexico. The sculpture was created in guild workshops and carried by donkey through the Pomeria Alta to its destination at the mission. Craftsmen created gesso clothing once the sculpture was in place. The church contains numerous references to the Franciscan court both on the facade and throughout the church. A symbol of pilgrimage after the patron saint of Spain, Santiago or James the Greater, is replicated all through the structure in window treatments, the sanctuary, the facade and other details within the interior. The Baroque architecture style features playful dramatic elements such as theatrical curtain displays, faux doors, morbling, an overall sense of balance. An earthquake in 1887 knocked down the mortuary wall and damaged parts of the church. Extensive repairs began in 1905, under Bishop Henry Grain John. The next round of restoration followed the years after 1939 when a lightning strike hit the West Tower Lantern. A group of community leaders formed the Patronato San Javier in 1978 to promote the conservation of Mission San Javier. Shortly after a comprehensive study of its condition was completed, water seeped into the west wall of the church's sanctuary, forcing an emergency conservation effort by the Patronato. 
In a five-year program, an international team of conservators cleaned, removed overpainting, and repaired the interior painted and sculptured art of Mission San Javier del Bac. The Patronato continues exterior preservation work begun in 1999. Its restoration team is removing the earlier coating of cement plaster, repairing the historic brick beneath, and refinishing the exterior surface with a traditional lime plaster. The sooner the cement can be removed, the greater the amount of original fabric can be preserved. More remains to be done if we are to guarantee this landmark for future generations.